Okay, from this video onwards, we will start working on how to create modular inputs in Splunk. Okay, so we will be mainly using Python SDK to achieve that. Even without Python SDK, also we can create modular input. But if you use Python SDK, it will be much easier to create the modular inputs. Okay, maybe in future I will see how to create modular input without the Python SDK as well. Okay, but mainly if you know this way, it should be enough to create any kind of modular input in Splunk. Now, first of all, we need to understand what is a modular input. So now, if you remember, uh, for, for our TMDB app, we created a scripted input over there, right? So what we did over there, so if I just go to settings, data inputs page, and if you see it over here, all these things are listed over here is the types of input you can create just like a TCP input or UDP input or local files or directory monitoring input, right? Or even you can create a script as well for the input as well. So when we talked about the TMDB scripted input, we basically created a script under this guy over here, right? We created a new local input and give the script path over here, the script name over here. Okay, now these things like whatever under the data input settings, data inputs page, whatever you can see it over here, this is these are called the modular inputs in Splunk. That means we will be basically creating a type of input in Splunk and then against that input we can create lot of different inputs over there just like over here for script for different different apps we can create different different inputs over here just like for TCP as well we can create multiple TCP connections over there right so that's the interesting stuff about the modular input that the basic stuff about the modular input now another thing is that the modular input can be run in multi-threading way or it can be run in, in in a single thread as well okay we will see how to achieve that one as well that means the single instance the multiple instance mode also we can run modular inputs okay and when we try to create an input for a particular modular input let's say tcp okay so when we create a lo new local tcp connection if you see it over here splunk ask for some informations like right? that the port number if you want to override the source or some other stuff right so now this is called the scheme of that particular input if you see for different different inputs we have different different scheme over here right for the file and directory monitoring we need to we need to give the file path over here right so so this is called the modular input scheme over here and we will and generally when splunk starts or we create a new modular input splunk try to determine this particular scheme because using this scheme only splunk will be rendering this guy in this ui when we'll come to a particular modular input in the ui we try to access it to create a new input splunk basically reads that scheme and render this guy over here okay so this is an important stuff over here and how splunk will do that it basically calls the modular input with this particular input over here as a particular parameter over here okay so this is another stuff over here now we will try to replicate the same behavior whatever we did it in the tmdb scripted input okay we have if you remember or if you have gone through that particular video maybe i'll give that video link somewhere over here so what we did over here so we basically access the upcoming movies right and over there to do that to basically access that api we actually use the access token over there now that access token maybe we will be creating a scheme over here so that user can input it or maybe to give an another example we will give the movie language as well okay so that user can input whatever language movie they wanted to extract over there okay so now in this video let's try to see what the basic stuff we need to create a modular input now in a very simple way modular input you can think about a another app okay so that means we need to create a new app first so we will click on this create app let's give it a name let's say tmdb 
modular input okay that's that's our app name even okay let's give this one as a folder name or give it as very good name over here tmdb modular input over here okay now version you can give some version over here generally when we create a app first time we give this particular version visible yes no let's make it as visible generally it's add-on right so generally it's not visible but you can make it visible as well author you can give your author name some meaningful description template you can just keep it as bare bone okay and click on save over here now once the app has been created so let's let's open that app in our visual studio code so i'll just add that particular folder to my code okay now now if you see it over here we have four folders bin default local and metadata now for a modular input to work and that to work with if you want to build a modular input using python sdk you need at least these folders one folder is the bin okay the next folder is the default the third folder will be a readme folder let's add that one add folder to workspace okay i'll just create a new folder over here under under the tmdb modular input new folder called readme okay this is very important folder now inside that readme folder we will be we will be keeping some file we will discuss about the file later first we will discuss about the folders so we talked about bin default readme another folder is very much important if you want to deploy it or basically develop your modular input using python sdk is a leave folder okay so these four folders are important and once we completed this one right you will see when you use plunk add-on builder it's kinds of creates it's basically creates a modular input only okay and very similar behavior if you see the codes add-on builder generates it's a very similar okay so either you can create your modular input using add-on builder if you are familiar with it or you can create in this way as well okay so so these four folders we talked about now inside the leaf folder we will be keeping the package the splunk is the that, that means the splunk lib one okay now how to download it if you go to their github page okay for splunk python sdk so there is a folder called splunk lib so this is the one you need to copy either you can basically download this particular full code base or clone it so i actually i think i did i did clone it in my local okay so this is something like this one so from here i will be copying this splunk lib folder okay and i will be pasting in my apps let's say it is the apps tmdb modular input app leaf folder so first requirement is this one if you are you if you are basically developing the modular input using python sdk now the second thing is inside the bin folder so let's i'm going back to the visual studio again so it will be easier for me to explain so we put the splunk lib under the lib folder now in the bin folder i will be creating in basically i'll be keeping my python file over here now this is very much important the name of the python file and the name of the inputs needs to be same this is what i am talking about let's give it a name let's say we give tmdb modular input only the name okay dot py you can give any name over here okay now this particular name that this tmdb underscore modular underscore input dot py okay you need to remember now inside the readme folder we will be having another file called spec file okay so the name of the file is inputs dot conf dot spec file okay now inside this inputs dot conf dot spec file basically we tell what are the different inputs user needs to give that means if i just go back over here and go back to settings data inputs 
for a particular input, let's say TCP, if I just try to create a new input over here, so what are the different fields user needs to input? That means the scheme, in the scheme, what are the different elements we are creating? So that elements needs to have a place in the inputs.conf.spec. And this is how you will give it. So if I just go back to this modular input, their, their GitHub page, there are a lot of examples over here. If you go inside this examples folder, so there is an example for random number modular input. And if you go inside this readme folder over here and check the inputs.conf.spec file, it is something like this one. Okay. So I'll just copy it. I'll paste it over here. Now, first thing is this guy. What will be the name of this guy? The name of this one has to match with the Python file. You will be using it. Okay. So I'll just copy the name of the file. Come over here and paste it. Okay, the name of the Python file, then colon slash slash. You can give this name inside the this angle bracket. This is just a spec file. You need to remember this one. Okay, so your inputs will be created in similar fashion, which we will see it. And we still not have any kind of details what we are going to create. So I am just keeping it as just a skeleton. I am keeping it over here. Okay, so this is the inputs.conf.spec and it has to match with whatever scheme object you are creating over here. Okay, otherwise the script will be failing over there. The second thing is the modular input.py file. So here it's much important. So when we we'll, when we develop the modular input using Python SDK, we basically work with work with this particular package splunklib dot modular input okay now first we need to import this one from this package if you see there are a lot of sub classes available like argument then event then we have a class called script okay and and other classes which we will see when we will will be working with this class i think it has four to five classes it's a very small package but very interesting package and one of the class which will be initially working on is the script okay so let's create the skeleton over here in this video first okay so first as i said we need to import the this particular package over here splunklib.modular input right so we can import something like this one so if i just go back over here Okay, so something like this one from Splunk clip dot modular input import star input everything. Correct. So I'll just copy that. Now think about this. We need to understand where this Splunk clip is, which we copied in our leaf folder over here. Right. So for that, if you just go to Splunk documentation, it just inserting that particular path in this sys dot path. Okay, if you see the directory name containing the current file, that means our Python file, then it's going to the going up one level up. That means if I just go back. So this is our Python file where we are trying to do this one. Let's let's copy that code. It is very interesting and easy to understand. So if I just go back over here and do this, what what we are trying to do is do it over here is in the sys dot path we are trying to insert a new path over here correct and the path is so basically current file that means our this python file we are going one level up that means at the bin level then we are going to the lib directory okay that is what we are doing it over here now as we are using the python sys package we need to import sys as well over here first okay import sys so once we added this particular lib path, then, then only we will be able to add this modular input. You need to keep in mind this one. Okay. Now, if I just go back to the documentation again, so you need to create a new class first of all. So I'll copy this code. So we are just creating the, okay, we need to import OS as well because there is a call to OS package as well okay now if you see it over here 
the first requirement is you need to import this modular input class modular input package over here and import, import all the classes over here the second thing is you need to create your own class which is they have given the example of my script you can give any class name over here which will inherit from the class script so if i just go back to this modular input package documentation so there is a class called script over here if you see it okay why we are inheriting this one because in the script there are three methods get scheme then stream events and validate input okay so this three methods we need to override for our own purpose okay and if you see the as the name suggests the get scheme is actually dealing with how we'll be creating those ui elements okay stream event as it is telling us basically it will be streaming the data to the splunk for the indexing purpose and validate input means whatever ui element we are creating it over here just like over here if you want to add some kind of validation logic over here that we will be writing it over here in our validated input okay and if you see it in that in our python file we just it just created this three methods over here for overriding purpose okay we will do it in the next video now we need to somewhere call this particular script so that is what they have done it over here so if we just go go back to the documentation again so i'll just copy this one then we will understand okay so these are very small stuff so what they did so some way we need to call this part we need to execute these things over here correct so how we are executing we basically created a object of our my script class then created which basically uh, inherit the script class now if you see it's called a method called run so as we are inheriting this script class if you see it over here in the script class there is a method called run that's why you are able to call that run method which basically runs the modular input so that is what we are doing it over here with the sys dot argument okay so this is the whole skeleton of this particular modular input which we'll be working on so in the next video we will be talking about the get scheme how to create those ui elements okay then we will take it forward accordingly see you in the next video